like I said, because next week is dedicated for the women, if you have any woman in your family that's yet to marry and is of marriageable age, please take note of marriageable age. Write their names on an envelope, put a seed, seal it, and bring it. I can assure you they will be married very, very soon Amen. according to the will of God Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I was sharing with some in the prayer meeting. Somebody came and said, has not had a marriage, not a marriage, sorry, a toasting for three years. No man said, you look beautiful for three years. And we prayed, and in 48 hours, she had two marriage proposals. She asked me, who do I marry? I said, that's not my job. That's your job. Then the man brought his second sister. I said, the second sister, I said, the second sister is bothering that if God did it for her, he said he would do it for her. And she too said, well, they just told, but they don't propose. And we prayed again, and in less than seven days, she had two marriage proposals. And they're both married, and both with kids now. So what shall we do that we may see the works of God? Say, so believe on him whom he has sent. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember you many years back, I asked the lady, when would you like to marry? She said, now. I prayed for her. And in 24 hours, she had more than seven marital proposals. And in one month, she was married. <laughs> Praise God, it's an anointing. When that anointing rests on you, the king chased the 90 year old woman. King, uh, wasn't it? King Abimelech looked at Sarah. Kings don't chase old women. Did you hear me? The Bible says, when David was old, <laughs> and he was feeling cold, he said, Let a young virgin. Be sought for the king. To do what? To keep him warm. I'm reading the Bible. Don't look at me somehow. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. When King uh, Vash, when Vashti misbehaved and was removed, what was the recommendation? Let virgins be sought. And let them go through exams. In fact, the exam was horrible. So let them spend a night in the king's chamber and let him sample them and see whether he likes eh? He was testing death. Oh, Jesus. So they don't bring old women to kings. But the king saw a 90 year old man say, This is what, what is it's a charm. It's an anointing. It's a magnet. When he sits on you, wherever the man is, let him be in Ukraine fighting. He will abscond. Let him be in the Wagner, Russia. He will run from the war front. He will come and look for you. And he will find you. Okay? Amen. That's a good place. Should have said him. I don't say amen. amen. That anointing will be available. Ayomo kozika chaka kaya molu zigadika. God will give the grace to repair all marriages amen. and address all shortcomings amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I was um, preparing. For the men, and it's still men and women, because it's all about family. And I notice while preparing this for the children, the head of children asked me to do a write up for the children on a particular topic. While preparing for the children, it dawned on me the adults need this more than the children. It's called forgiveness and the wisdom to manage the crisis afterwards. The question is asked if a woman is raped. Does she forgive the man? How does she restitute? And does she manage it? Is it that easy to just forgive? What is forgiveness? Do you know a lot of men who are holding their wives in unforgiveness? Unforgiveness. And sometimes you asked what the wife did. Say, so Father, you won't believe it. This day, I had invited my old classmates to the house. <laughs> the one that pained me more is Benji that was there. 
And I asked her to bring, do you know that Aaron made you look for I said, what? Okay, even if I didn't give you money. Was I not giving you money before? Two years. Three years. They are still on it. So you don't know a lot of men hold their wives on forgiveness. Women also hold their husbands in unforgiveness. But I found out that it's easier to manage when it's not in relationship terms for the woman. So maybe he misbehaved. The day you were supposed to go to the party, seize the key of the car, and you have to go in the rain and you're dressed for they will forgive you. But if you say woman out there, ah. I remember a woman was telling me she'd be married for her husband for 28 years, no, 29, no, 32 years, 32 years. Some of us have probably know. She's late now, 32 years plus. I had to step in into the matter. I, actually, I didn't fully step in because they've taken the case to the council of the bishops. It was when they took the case, Pastor, she said she had a dream <coughs> that she should bring it to me. No, she said she had a dream to bring the case to me, but she took it to the church, the council of bishops. I said, well, the council of bishops are handling it. I can't handle it like this anymore. So they're already meeting. When they finish, I might step in, but by the time they were able to sort it out, she died, you know? And she helped him to go to school, pay for his school fees from her work. She helped him to stand on his feet. When he lost his job, she paid her salary into his account for more than 10 years. He lived on it, only for, to find out that he has another family with about four kids out there, which she didn't know. And when he was able to find and stand on his feet, he abandoned her, sold the house where she was living, took the money, and went to settle with the other woman. Question is, how do you forgive that? Oh. <laughs> Not somebody said, I was supposed to be, and, and at one time I asked the man to see me. He said, Who, do, who are you? That should come and see you. That's what he told me. He said, Who are you? Well, no, that is not like that. And then I said, Okay, all right, I'll listen to you, but just five minutes. Five minutes, Bukuma, borrow into vessel. I spoke with him, but the Council of Bishops handled it, so there was nothing I could do. She's late. She was buried this year, right? Buried mommy this year. So how do you handle that? After investing your entire life, only to find that he has a family, then the only thing left, the house that you built together with him, <coughs> mostly with your own salary to suffer, he sold it without your knowledge took the money, bought himself a car, bought another house, put the other woman in it. And you know, the man that bought it, I said, you have 40 days to move out. And the case had to go to court. But the Lord said, you still have to forgive. Now, how do you manage, even after you are forgiven, because the children are married, you have to meet another. How do you manage that? How do you look at him, like when you are sitting and you are meeting, and you are looking, <laughs> have you truly forgiven all right. The issue of whether to forgive or not is not a discourse. As we must forgive, because it's commanded by the Lord. However, the issue of restitution, relationship, and managing hurt, we have to address it. Because the party's hurt. Or oh, you won't tell me that person, no, no, she's hurt. There are two issues here concerning the offender. A changed, remorseful, completely new entity, as we saw in the life of the prodigal son who was proud, hasty, arrogant, reckless in his lifestyle. But when he returned, he was now humble, responsible and disciplined. So, reabsorbing that may not be difficult after the issues have been settled. And the case of Onesimus, that's Philemon, the book of Philemon, who stole from his master and ran away, but now he's saved and was a disciple under Apostle Paul and Paul recommended him to be taken back. Being a changed man. 
The other is a non-changed, non-repentant sinner. He has done it, he has done it. Go and do your worst. <clears throat> In both cases, you must forgive. However, in case number one, the person can be reabsorbed and the relationship restored, but with caution. Forgiveness is not stupidity. Did you hear me? In case of the first party who has truly repented, restituted, you can reabsorb with caution. In case number two, the person must be kept at a distance. In some cases, justice must be pursued in order to save other innocent people from harm that can come from such an individual. Matthew chapter 5. People don't realize there's a difference between justice and restitution. Restitution is with God. In Luke 18, justice is both with God and man. And in Luke 18, the widow went to the judge for justice, and the Lord commended her faith. So justice is not out of line if it's in order. But restitution majorly comes from God. There's a difference between restitution and restoration. If somebody stole a hundred thousand and he restores the hundred thousand, you have restored your money. But when you sue for damages for the time you discard and he didn't pay me back, and I'm suing for one million, that's restitution. That comes from God. But there is nothing wrong in seeking justice from an unrepentant, non changed sinner. It is not lack of forgiveness. I will show you what forgiveness is. And what lack of forgiveness is, we'll see it from the scripture. Are you following? <coughs> now, we said Matthew 5, verse 30. And it says, if your right hand offends you, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish, not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So, if it's still an instrument of offense, he said, mark them that obey not the word, Abi, and do what, avoid them. That's what the Bible says. So if it's a person that is causing offenses in your life and they're unrepentant, you have the duty to avoid them. It is not unforgiveness. I'll show you what forgiveness is. We'll see what forgiveness and unforgiveness is. And we must understand what forgiveness is and what unforgiveness is. In the U.S., there's a system called parole, whereby a prisoner is allowed to spend the later part of his or her prison term in his house after a thorough observation of proof of change and cannot be a danger to the society. So you have a duty to protect yourself and make sure that the object whom you are forgiven is not given another opportunity to cause another harm. So we have a duty to forgive, to protect ourselves from evil people. We'll look at different examples. After the definition, we'll look at different examples because it's those examples that's bothering people. For example, you keep money with somebody and he spends your money and is not able to pay you back. Now, the person could be nice. We're going to look at different scenarios. Nice, hardworking can even be a blessing in other areas of your life. But has a weak financial discipline. There are people like that. They are financially weak. Keep money in their hand, they spend it. But they are nice. First, you must forgive. Secondly, if the money is not much and you can comfortably sorry, English. Comfortably afford to leave it, then let it go. If you cannot afford to let it go, probably business money, you can work out a repayment plan that is not necessarily convenient but realistic 
to get your money back. It is not unforgiveness. Like I said, unforgiveness is no stupidity. Thirdly, you must never, in restoration relationship, never commit funds to such a person again. However, you can still relate well with such a person in other areas of life and avoiding finances so that there is no problem again. But to be, I'm sorry, stupidly to commit funds to the person again, say you are forgiven. That's stupidity. Did you hear me? All right. Luke 15. It's quiet, right? I read from verse 11. Luke 15 from verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. He divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country. There wasted his substance with riotous living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the hawks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise, go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. When it was yet a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, ran and fell on his neck, kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father interrupted him and said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet. Please now take note, very carefully, take note. Bring the fattest calf, kill it, let us eat and be merry. 24. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Then they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field and as he came, drew near to the house, he heard music. This is one of the greatest messages of forgiveness in the Bible. Music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked, what these men, these things mean? He said to him, thy brother is come, and thy father had killed the fattest cow because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he said to his father, Lord, this many years do I serve you. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. Yet you never gave me a key that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this your son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, you killed for him the fattest calf, and he said to him, Son, you are ever with me, and all I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Now, it's a bit technical. If I back to um, this um, scripture, chapter, just a minute. Um, because forgiveness is a thing of the heart. I'm, ju I'm coming just a minute. Now, Matthew 18. No, 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 sorry, not that, not that, sorry, just a minute. Um, okay, just.
just a minute. Matthew. I'm looking for a way to say, if you, from your heart, do not forgive your brother. He used the word heart. You must forgive your brother from the heart. It's in one of the Gospels. All right. Um, just a minute, please. All right, Matthew 18, I got it, Matthew 18, sorry, it's 35, Matthew 18, verse 35, it says, so likewise shall my heavenly father do also to you, if you from your heart forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses, so it's from the heart, and the best way to know whether from your heart you are forgiving is what you say. Is what you say. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you go back to Luke 15, about the prodigal son, we said you must, from your heart, forgive. And the best way to know what is in the heart is what you say. So when he returned, his father said, my son was dead, he's alive. He was lost, he's found. Meaning that statement does not absolve the son of his wrong and does not pretend he did nothing wrong. But that statement he made does not scandalize nor does not disgrace or put to shame his son. So what he's saying, oh, he was dead. He's alive now. He was lost. He's found. And to show that the elder brother is in unforgiveness, he said, this is your useless son that wasted all your money on riotous living. When he told that to the father, the father repeated, but you know, he was dead. He's alive. He was lost. He's found. So what you say will determine whether you are forgiven or not. You say, I'm forgiving the guy, but that useless. Ah, but when will they show you, honestly speaking? You have not forgiven. Do you get it? Forgiveness is not absorbing the person because he didn't absorb his son. And if you see, he restored him back as a son, but he had no more privileges or benefits. He said, all I now have to the elder brother. <clears throat> Excuse me. All I have is now thine. So he's returning to no inheritance. He says, but you're forgiving him. Now why don't you find something for him? No, there's nothing for him. He has collected his inheritance. It is not unforgiveness. Did you hear me? That's why he told the other brother, everything is now yours. And you know, you stole the money. Now he's going to school. I need money. No. You have to work for this. Ah, but you're forgiven. Oh, I've forgiven you. But there's a new rule of financial discipline. It is not unforgiveness. Do you get it? So unforgiveness is better known by derogatory statements. While forgiveness is better known by encouraging statement that does not absolve you of your wrong. Am I communicating? I'm forgiving him. But anyway, to buy law, ah, I bolo on loga. He will know that there's fire on the mountain. But let him go. I forgive him honestly. You have not forgiven. You have not forgiven. Did you hear me? You got the statement of the father and the brother. You can see the brother is still hot. Even in his action, he's hot. He refused to come in. He said, this is your useless. I, I can imagine what he, this useless idiot. That when I used to greet him, who answered me? He wasted all your money. I'm be slaving that this thing came back. Oh, you have not forgiven him. Amen. 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 I was quiet. Should we close? No, no. Are you bored? No. Why are you quiet? Oh, 
Oh, have you been saying that about people that you claim you forgive? I think that's more like it. Ah, so that means I've not really forgiven. The three principal words to, that means forgive is send away to let go and be gracious. I'm not concentrating on forgiveness. I just gave you the technical bit of forgiveness with utterances. I'm concentrating on the wisdom to manage restitution, restoration, reparations. All right? And we look at, in the case of um, the lady that took your money, and you work out that, and you schedule and they pay you your money back, and you manage that relationship better by avoiding financial transactions. But in a case where it's a subject of things like a rape, where um, you can't get your money back and stuff like that, what do you do? We'll go to techniques of forgiveness again later on. It must be a lifestyle. If someone offends you 70 times, seven times in a day, 490 times a day, you have to forgive, meaning you must take it as a lifestyle. You must take it as a lifestyle. Now, you must recognize mistakes, weaknesses, and deliberate acts of evil. Did you hear me? You must recognize mistakes, weaknesses, and deliberate acts of evil. In Hebrews 10, 26, it says, this is God talking. If you sin willfully, hmm, because some people think, I remember when I was driving, someone said, ah, Christianity, my God, oh. I said, no, it's not daftness. But, you know, some things you just have to apply wisdom and stuff like that. He said, if you sin willfully, after that you have received the knowledge of truth, say there's no more repentance for that. There's no sacrifice of sin for that person. So the way you deal with somebody who willfully carries out an evil act, fully comprehending what he's doing, is not the same way you deal with somebody who made a mistake. Also, if you go to Numbers 14, because we're looking at God, the object of love himself, forgiveness and mercy and grace. Numbers 14 from verse 20, and the Lord said, I have pardoned. You know, the children of Israel, Moses sent the spies out. Uh, let me, let's, let's Moses sent 12 spies. Ten came with an evil report. And the whole congregation cried and said, we're like grasshoppers. We can't face them. They are doomed and everything. And God said he would disinherit all of them. And Moses pleaded for them and said, pardon. And this is God's response. And he said, I have pardoned according to your word. But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because those men which have seen my glory, my miracles which I did in Egypt, in the wilderness, they've tempted me now ten times. They have not repented. They will not see the land. But he has pardoned. <laughs> Am I communicating? Because some people don't understand the difference between forgiveness, restoration, restitution, and reparation. They are not the same. God said, I have. Let me read it again. And show my party forgive. So I'll have to Eh? No. 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 Wisdom must be applied after forgiving. Even a husband. <coughs> You put money together in an account, went to use the secret money to buy a house for a girlfriend, are forgiven. But we won't have a joint account again. It's not unforgiveness. It's wisdom. And no, 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 no more. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Chevy, you are forgiven. And you know people say, Chevy, you are forgiven. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, let it be as before. No, it can no longer be as before. <coughs> Uh, let me read it again, please. 
Time is far gone. I have to stop. I was planning next week for the women. We'll look at some aspects of how to make your wife happy. I, I, I guess we'll add extra chairs for people to come and sit. <laughs> no, 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 no. I guess relationship, this is one of the challenge, greatest challenges of relationship, forgiveness. I'm managing it afterwards. I'm managing it afterwards. You get it? Even father, mother, father, mother, uh, sorry, father, child, you get it? So fathers, they do some things. I say, wow, it's your father. You must forgive. You must honor. But if you have a weakness in this area, no, we will not give you access to this again. But we will respect you. We will honor you. We will take good care of you. But because you can't be trusted with this, we will give you this again. He said in Numbers 14, 20, the Lord said to those grumbling, complaining, who said we are like grasshoppers before this, God said, me brought you to be like grasshoppers before this. He said to Moses, I have pardoned, meaning I have forgiven. According to your word, but, there's a but now. <clears throat> as truly as I live, all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men which have seen my glory, ah, ah, it was the others I will leave it, not you of all people. Ah, at this stage you have gotten to, no, 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 no. No, it shouldn't be you. They have seen my glory, my miracles, which I did in Egypt, in the wilderness. They've tempted me now ten times. They have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, he has followed me fully. I'll bring him to the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. So I have forgiven, but they will not enter. Hmm. That's God. And he has forgiven. He has pardoned. Time is far gone. I leave that as a template. I guess we'll have to continue next week Sunday. Then we'll address reparation. Because how do you reparate, restitute, rape? You can't give, you can't, even if you walk out schedule, you can't get your money back. But you can get justice. What did God say will happen to them? He said they would die in that wilderness. Were they pardoned? Yes. What happened to them? They died. Were they pardoned? Yes. So justice is not lack of unforgiveness. Don't confuse the two. Justice is wisdom. Managing a sinner that's repentant or unrepentant. That is justice. That is not unforgiveness. Because you can seek justice and forgive, and you can seek justice and not forgive. It is not forgiveness or unforgiveness. God said they will die. They can't go. And they died. And he pardoned. The first statement is that he has pardoned them. So don't confuse it. It's a bit technical, B. Uh, but they are very practical issues. Next week Sunday, we'll have question and answer session. During the main service. There's no Bible study on next week Sunday. Starting to, we have question and answers. Get your questions, bring them, and then we'll continue. We're using next week more of case studies of different issues. An incest of father to daughter and all different types like that. What do they do? What is forgiveness? How do you do again? What do you do? All sorts are happening, right? Please protect yourself, protect your family, protect your children. I'm a bit an overbearing now, and I'm like it that way. But I won't let you get to a point where I'm going to have to struggle to forgive you. No, I won't even give you that chance. You hear me? I'm one person I can march into my, my children's school. I'm here! <laughs> ah, that's your own. You are psychedelic. I'm not psychedelic. Yes, I hear this. I want to confirm this. I want to know this. You get it? The words you will abuse me. Let it be too much. Do you get it? Because when that life is ruined, sometimes you may not even be able to get it back. I won't let it get ruined. And you must have that lifestyle and that attitude. Did you hear me? 
You have a duty as a man to protect that family. The wife and the children. Do you get it? Yes, Some things that are lost, they can be easily say, how much is it? Village, you my boy. Your, uh, whose car got burnt? Who was doing wedding? When we that the car? One four or six like this. For your old car like this. And is, what is this? Not better than that now. Ah, what is that? His car, you replace it. His money, you replace it. There are some things you can't replace. Oh, you protect it. And God will love you for it. Did you hear me? I let them say your own is too much. Oh, God, you leave it. You get it? Amen. So, now don't forget, next week is for the women, prayers, ministration, and those chicks that needs to have been married and are yet to be married, whether the first, second, third, fourth, or seventh marriage. Say, yeah. <laughs> eh? Did you hear me? Yes, sir. So if they've been married six times before, and it didn't work, and then you now want, this won't work. Yes, like a friend of mine had 13 miscarriages. Then the 14th a boy, 15th a girl. 16th a boy. <laughs> like the woman at the well of Samaria. I even, I even have a rate. Let me not see because people can be watching me online. <laughs> you know? But if you want them to get married, whether they are young or old, did you hear me? If they, are, if they are 60 and they want to marry and they are qualified to get married, put their name and put the seed and bring it. Do you get it? Did you hear me? Yes, sir. You know, this church is a non-conformist and non-traditional. For example, oh, um, our brother Gideon and our sister Irede were blessed with a baby girl yeah. during the week. More than the baby are doing fine. I gave the Gideon, I gave him paternity leave. I don't know why he came. I always give the men, when your wife gives birth, your wife has uh, how many months? You are, is this three months? You have uh, 45 days of paternity leave from church. So by the time I called him that you're on leave, he said he was on his way, he was almost in church. So I was, he will start his paternity leave from next week. And because um, he must know when to go and get the hot water. Yeah, that's me. You get it? Some men can't really carry the baby. That's okay. But get the hot water or your silo for look at this washing machine now. Just throw in the machine, all the uh, this that one wash. But he has to dry it. It's not the woman that just give it that will go and dry. He's the one that will go and dry it. Abby with clip. Do you get it? Uh -huh. Then uh, her food. Her food is the one to make. If he doesn't want to make kamala and everything, what would do? Um, he will bite now. Then she cook the stew. If he doesn't know how to do that, you spend money on it. Abby, go and buy it. Yeah. Or you just secretly go and greet mommy. Like, I just came to greet you, mommy. I miss your face. I don't want to you. Say, ah, but it's late. Say, but it's late. They take it to her. So we thank God. And we uh, thank God. Like I said, mother and baby are doing fine. Now, they have a girl. That's the first girl in the family. You know, the whole family. They don't have, they've been only having boys. That's the first girl. Abby, in the whole family, they're all boys. Their tradition is only boys. So, the broken tradition. So, it's Gideon will be praying for. You get it? In Jesus' name. Trust you, they, they would uh, whip them in line. I am on, nah, I whip, we are the ones that beg you, they calm down. We are the ones that beg you, calm down. But yeah, give her ice cream, let her not cry. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs>